Welcome everyone, welcome to another Let's Play. This is Metal Canyon and we'll be Let's Playing Objects in Space, a game by Flat Earth Games. Now I have to say a big thank you to one big fat guy for actually gifting this to me. And it's quite funny because a couple of hours later the developer sent me a press key for this, but... <laughs> oh well. Anyway, uh, this is going to be mostly blind. I've just played a little bit to get acquainted with the game just a bit. So I'm, you know, not completely lost. But anyway, it's a rather interesting game that obviously happens in space in, I think, sort of the far future. And <laughs> the funny thing is it's made by Flat Earth Games. A bit ironic <laughs> name for that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's begin. The core game of Objects in Space takes place over three months in the Apollo Cluster. Time is always moving forwards. This game autosaves whenever you dock, undock, or use a jump gate. So let's begin. So you will immediately notice that it's got quite the distinct, uh, interesting uh, graphics. Uh, graphical style. And I, I kind of like it, actually. Let's talk to her. Wendy Mafumo. She's using Panglish. Hey! Looked like you zoned out there for a second, compadre. You with us or what? The Cassandra ain't gonna check itself off for the last jump. You ready to head out? What are we doing again? What? You can't be that hungover, surely. Look, I, I get that it's repetitive, but whether it's the first time or the 50th, we're still going out on our, our own in those itty-bitty little shuttles. If we don't make sure uh, her systems are all in check, who knows what could screw up on Cass next jump. It's nothing but us in space for light years in any direction. But you know this already. Ain't your first rodeo, I know. So let me put on my flight commander hat for one second and say, let's get started. One last time before we reach Apollo. You're right, let's go. That's the spirit. Request undocking permission from the monitor, then jump on through the airlock. Oh, and keep the communications open so we can chat on the outside. All right, see you out there. All right, so we're going to request... We're actually... Um, on the starship Cassandra, which is this big, uh, sort of arc, I supposed, that's, uh, supposed to colonize things. Permission is required. Undock your utility shuttle from Cassandra. Oh, there's a two missing. Right click to return from you. Okay, request permission. Grant it. Permission to undock has been accepted. You may depart at your leisure. All right, let's go. So now we're in the ship. Let's, uh, close the doors first. Outer airlock and inner airlock. Arrow keys will zoom down. Now this is the really cool part about this game. You control your ship, but you don't actually do it all from one screen. You move about and you use these uh, screens. So if I go left, uh, we've got our navigation. Okay, there's only two rooms. It's this one and this one. So let's go over here and let's undock. Removing docking clamps. Remove. Detaching from power rig. Detached. Preparing to launch. There we go. She's calling us, I think. Wendy Mafumo. Hey there, Wendy here. Okay, switching to professional mode. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Same as always. Rotate your ship to 50 degrees on your helm screen. Um, okay. Yeah, 50 degrees. Okay, I'm at 50 degrees now. Okay, we're in sync. And burn main engines for a second or two to bring her up to speed. Uh, let's burn. Engines are online. Alright, we're moving. Let's get out uh, out there and make sure Cass is in good shape before heading back. Stop the burn and let's drift for a while. Let's stop the burn. We cannot go over our maximum speed anyway, which is, in this case, 0.55, uh, I'm assuming, gigameters per second? Okay, so now you can see that we're actually moving away from the Cassandra. Professional mode deactivating. <laughs> but listen, back to what I was saying at poker. I get giddy sometimes just thinking about this trip. It's so freaking cool, am I right? Like, how the shit did we get here, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a trip. We're the furthest any human beings have ever been from Earth. We're harboring some 750,000 people back on the Cassandra. And it's up to us, just us, to help get her safely to the Apollo Cluster. I do know about you, but that really tickles me. Forget Earth and the haters. This journey is the single greatest thing humanity has done since inventing fire. Do you ever wonder what's waiting for us out there? In the Apollo Cluster, I mean? 
so many star systems to explore. I guess it could be anything. Well, yeah, it could be, but we've got just one more jump until we're there. Exciting as hell! And I know that planets with potential life don't mean there actually is any, but even that one in a billion, uh, one in a billion chance still excites me. And hell, even if there's nothing there, we at least know there'll be planets rich in the gases and minerals we'll need to thrive. And what's more exciting than being the first humans to colonize an entirely new star cluster? Forget Mars, forget goddamn Neptune with its boring ass truck stop space stations. This place is entirely on us, you know? It's what we make it. Yeah, it's exciting. A totally new hum humanity. Exactly. We'll be the best versions of humanity we can possibly be. And you know what? Screw whatever we consider humanity back on Earth. That was 10 years ago. Here's the thing. We made a choice, you and me. We're at one of only a handful of people who made the choice to leave all that behind and seek a new life among the stars, you know? Yeah. Yep, this is a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Damn straight! There's not usually this much uh, text, by the way. There's, uh... There's more other stuff going on. And, okay, let's come to a stop here. Head to your nav mat and hit full stop so we can start scanning Cass. Uh, let's go to full stop. They'll turn our ship around and burn, so we actually stop. There we go. You will notice how nice the nebula and stuff uh, look over here. Uh, there's a reason I'm telling you this, because some of the ships will get have a much simpler interface, in a way. At full stop now, Cassandra is being scanned. Good work. So, look, I've been thinking about this, and the way I see it, choice is loss. Everyone speaks about it like it's an opportunity, and it is, but it's also loss. It's the loss of every job offer you never pursued, every crush you never kissed, every damn... I don't know, every time you choose chocolate over goddamn vanilla. Better get used to it, is what I'm saying. Heck, I'll bet if you'd have chosen Earth, you'd probably be sitting in Johannesburg or some such place wondering about what you missed out here in the emptiness. But, like I say, choice is loss. Coming here wasn't your first and it won't be your last. That is true, Wendy. That is true. I hope it all works out for us when we get there. So do I. So do I. Okay, Cassandra's status is nominal. We can start moving back in. Dropping a beacon on your new map, uh, uh, nav map for the rendezvous now. Head to your nav map, plot a course there and press engage. If you can't see the beacon, you can pan around the nav map. It'll pop up eventually. So there's a uh, nav map. We'll uh, plot the course there and engage. There we go. Okay, course laid in and we're away. I'm glad you're excited too, even if this stuff does make me nervous. I mean, we've been jumping for 10 straight years and we've seen the solar system from such a distance it's barely recognizable. But you know what? We're nearly there. We're almost on Apollo. And then we get to do something no other human has ever done before. We get to start again. But like, really start again. Do you reckon Apollo will be okay? I'm really asking here. Uh, I guess it depends on the people in charge when we get there. But we're the ones who get to decide. Whatever humanity looks like next, we're the one, one of the few who can actually shape it. I don't know about you, but that excites the shit out of me. Why did it burn there for a moment? That was weird. Hey, I got a joke for you. How many Earthlings does it take to change a light bulb? Um, I don't know, how many? Who the shit cares? We're Apollon uh, Apollonians now. While those pricks are busy screwing in light bulbs, we're making history look like a damn footnote. Hell, we're expanding the reach of humankind so much we're not just rewriting history, but rewriting what history even is. Here's what I think. Getting to the Apollo Cluster is taking us 10 years. That's only something no one's ever done before, but something no one will ever have to do again. We arrive, we build our side of the Earth Gate, and people can come and go as they please. It's just straight up awesome. Not another soul is ever going to embark on a 10-year space journey like this. It'll take them an instant to do what we've done in a decade. We're not just trailblazers. We're not just pioneers. We're one of a kind, baby. That's pretty cool, you're right. Damn right I'm right. We're gonna finally get to Lagrange, uh, make Planifold and build Earthgate. This'll be the ultimate bridge. Earthgate will bring about trans-cluster travel. Trans-cluster travel in an instant. Can't argue with how insane that sounds. Yeah, okay, that is pretty awesome. Huh. 
Huh? What? Huh? Oh, nothing. Just a blip on my scanners. I'm sure everything looks normal now. What blip you see? I don't see anything. That's weird. Uh, going ahead as planned. If it's serious, one of the crew will send instructions. I'm not worried. Maybe we should double check with the Cassandra first. Nah, those are just automated uh, readings. We'd be contacted directly if they were serious. Alright, we're... Okay, I'm being told that you need to reposition slightly. Not sure why. I've dropped another beacon in your nav map. Plot a course for it and engage. All other ships are 5x5 five five and ready to jump. As soon as you're there, hit jump ready on the Cassandra monitor and I'll uh, see you in Apollo, baby. Alright. This is the other plot now. Unfortunately, I was a little too late. We've already decelerated, but it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't seem like you, you use any fuel uh, for these travels. You use energy. Uh, course plot it. Let's do this. Our new home. Nice one, tiger. Choice is loss. But you're losing empty space and choosing a new heaven. Hard to argue with that. See you on the other side. Connection terminated. Okay, so we're gonna move over to there uh, Cassandra Remora, is that I guess we've just been talking to her running, jump drive is spun up awaiting jump sink, jumps left one population half a million okay, I thought it was 750 scan sink, scan hole, jump ready so we need to get to our position, and then uh, do the jump ready. So yeah, we're using uh, power, you'll see that in, in the other ships we get. Incoming call. Oh, the Cassandra. Alexandra equipped. Okay, people, this is Cassandra Actual. All ships have reported in, and we're ready for the final jump into Apollo. Everybody check your Cassandra status screens and select jump ready when you're in position. Alright. We'll also go here. Oh yeah, there's the... There's our stuff. There's our ship. Little tiny ship. Alright. Let's uh, jump ready. And we're jumping! Uh-oh. Error, no signal. No signal for Cassandra. Non-functional. Module failed. Yeah, helm... Helm has failed. And we're spinning. Jolly Rancher. There's Mark III Freighter, Lago Gasport. Incoming hail. <clears throat> Leslie Garbett. Hey there! What's going on? You all right in there? What? Uh, who are you? Where are the others? I'm Liz. Just running my local route through these here parts and suddenly you appeared on my radar. And I'm like, heck, this ain't a normal jump location, so I figured I'd better see what's up. Tell me, are you okay? You seem to be spinning. Uncontrollable like. Um, can you help me? I can help you, yes. You're gonna keep on spinning and your ship's gonna keep on shaking like that till we fix it. I'm guessing it's your helm that's shot, and unless you got back to your engineering section and take a look at it, you're gonna be spinning like that forever. Head to engineering, and you're gonna uh, wanna open up your helm system, drag out the dead component, and switch it with a working one from your storage. Can you do that? I think so. Can you walk me through it a little? Let's see... You're in an old Remora-class shuttle. So if memory serves right, you'll want to get onto that engineering monitor near where your airlock is and use the interface to click on your busted helm. You'll want to disconnect your helm. Open it up, unscrew all four of the screws and press the big green button in the bottom middle. Then find the component that's marked red for damage and drag it out into storage. That makes sense there, Skipper? Okay, so let's go to... this. Um, helm, disconnect it, open it. Now this is the really cool part, you actually get to um, fix stuff. So let's unscrew. Open it. And there's the burnt out component. A broken microcomputer. But fortunately we have a spare. 
There we go. Close that. And it's running again. Let's uh, close it and connect it. There we go. Fully functional. Yep, that's all done. Okay, now once that's broken parts gone, you'll want to drag it in, in a working one. Oh, just, <laughs> just drag whatever you've got which matches up from your ship's storage onto the helm module. Alright, done. It's working again. Nice going! Now hit the button down the bottom to close it up, screw it back in, then hit close and connect to hook, uh, hook it back up to the ship. Once it's done, you should be right as rain. Okay, I've closed and reconnected the modules. Welcome back to the land of the less mangled ship. So, if you press the RCS button back on the helm on your bridge, that'll stop her from spinning. Here's the RCS, there we go. So that'll keep her, keep her steady. Done, she stopped spinning. So, uh, what are you doing out here all of a sudden? Uh, where is here exactly? Well, you're in the Leo system, not too far out from the lag of gas mines. Ring a bell? I... what? Where's the Cassandra? The Cassandra? Are you high? Well, relative to the nearest planetary body with a ground, I'd say probably yes. <laughs> Suppose you've got to be a little sarcastic to keep the old Cracker Barrel from going nuts out in space, huh? Can't say I blame you, so where are you really headed? The Cassandra, like I said. She should be here on the other support ships. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see what's happening here. You're a newcomer. I, I am? I mean, I guess. What's a newcomer exactly? Since we all got here in Apollo, we had occasional support ships from the Cassandra mission popping in way later than the rest of the convoy. On the final jump, they got caught in some kind of space-time rift or some such bizarre thing. They end up getting here alright, but way later than they should. Uh, and what's... how many others has it happened to? About a dozen or so from what I read in the papers. So, uh, welcome to Apollo! Sorry there's not much more ceremony. Thanks, I guess. How late am I? Ah, yes, well, uh, so this is the part other folks said in the papers they found the hardest, so you might want to sit down or something. How late am I? Just prepare yourself, okay? How late? We're coming up on 45 years since first planet fall on Lagrange. What? What? I'm half a century late? Now, listen, let me guide you back to port. I'm reasonably sure there's someone there who can set you up with, like, a support group or some such thing. Support group? Yeah, for newcomers, folk, folks like yourself. Folks who've lost folks, you know? Lost. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been 45 years. I hate to break it to you, but a lot of your old friends are likely dead. I mean, me, I've got a fully grown kids of my own, and I was born here. This is unbelievable. I'd be thinking the same thing if you was the first, but like I say, you're like number 12 or something. If I recall, the AEA passed a law a while back which let newcomers keep the vessel they arrived in. A short-range shuttle like yours might not be much, but you can get a decent load of cash for it for its historical value and easily get yourself up as a freelance captain out here. Let me take you back to the nearest port. I can point you in the right direction and get you started, I guess. Okay, so go into your nav map there and you should see an icon not too far off which is listed as Lago Gasport. Why don't you click on that, then press plot course and engage? I'll fly there with you. Alright, so obviously this is a tutorial and there's a lot of talking in the tutorial, but it's really interesting. I wanted to do this because it gives you a lot of very interesting information about what's actually going on and why you are here. Okay, I'm on route to Lago Gasport now. So listen, there's a few things you should know. I've heard that the people who come here on the Cassandra were expecting better than what we got. What do we get exactly? Well, plenty of places to start up colonies and such, but not a one of them's got breathable air. Folks can walk around outside in some places, but only with breathing apparatus and only for short stints. So as not to get poisoned, you follow? Not what we were hoping for, but plenty of colonies sounds promising. Sure, plenty of colonies, and space stations for most of them. Rapid transport from star system to star system, it's not half bad. And did we find any other life out here? Well, microbe-like type things, yes, but nothing as large as I'd comfortably call it an animal as such. So no aliens then. Sorry friend, no aliens. There's probably much more to talk about which uh, might shock you, but let's leave it at that, you're on solid ground. 
Let's talk back at Lago. Okay. Shouldn't take more than a minute or two to get there. All right, signing off. See you there. What a nice guy. And we're almost at uh, Lago. Now, time runs in real time, but you can accelerate it. If I open my uh, PDA thingy, uh, time is... Where's the time? Oh, I cannot actually go through the tabs at the moment. Okay, never mind. So yeah, this is a really, really interesting game. If, if you might think it may be a little bit boring right now, even though I didn't find it boring personally. There we go, we're about to decelerate. Uh, like I said, don't worry, there's a lot more to this. This is just a tutorial with lots of talking, so it gives you the story and some of the basics and stuff. But yeah, like I said, this will be mostly a um, blind playthrough because I haven't really done that much. Okay, running life support, sync check. So there we go, there's our battery power. But, um, yeah, say goodbye to the ship anyway. This tiny little ship. I wonder if I could just take out things and keep them. Like, take out all the uh, components. I don't know. Alright, let's get onto the space station. There's Leslie. Welcome to Apollo, partner. I'm Les. We've spoken when you were spinning around aimlessly in space just now. Uh, yes, I remember. Good times. I'm excited as hell to meet a newcomer. And listen, I was thinking on the way over here, you're probably pretty dang lost right about now. No friends, no family and so forth. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what I mean to say is, I want to help. Get you oriented, like, get you set up, understand? Sure, that sounds great. So, first things first, your ship. What's wrong with my ship? I know it's probably got some sentimental value to you and all, but that old Remora shuttle you came here in? Well, it ain't space legal. Space legal? Yeah, like that old bird is 50 years out of date. No way you can legally fly her these days. You'll need to get yourself another ship before they'll let you undock. How do I get myself another ship? Take a look around Lago. The different monitors around the place are where you can buy and sell ship parts and cargo. Apply for jobs and loans and such, and one will be the local ship broker. Your shuttle may not be legal to fly, but its historical value will make it damn nice for trade and cash, so you should be f uh, flush enough to buy yourself a decent ship to get started. Aw, but I like my shuttle. It's got such character. She sure does. And it's being able to trade her in and get a much bigger and better ship. Heh, <laughs> that shuttle can't even haul cargo, which is how most of us freelancers out here make a living. A kind of ship you can get with that cash? No competition. I guess I'll have to then. Uh, thanks for your help. Go get yourself a new ship of some kind, then uh, come find me. Reckon I can set you up with some work. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks again. Alright, so he's been nice enough. Let's see. Invalid's reg. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's go to the right. This is of order. Um, no, wait. We need the ship terminal. Ah. Wait a second, let me see. Functional, nominal. Oh, you can still repair it and stuff. Interesting. Cannot buy any pods. Cannot obviously buy any modules for it, I suppose. Probe launcher, okay. So let's go to the ship broker. Ceres Mark Three. there we go, El Camino. So this is the one we can do. Our trade-in is almost 43,000 credits, which is pretty nice. We cannot afford this one because we would need 37,000 extra. Uh, we could get this one, but this one is second hand. And I don't think I really want a second hand. Previous owner was a trader operating out of Diwali. Could use some TLC. Has run fine for years with a skeleton crew. Is going to require a new sensor suite installed before she can be flown. Yeah, that's not worth it. Uh, I would spend much more money that, uh, than I would save. So let's just purchase a brand new Ceres Mark III. There we go. So now we got a new ship. Let's go back. Now let's talk to him. You sorted out? Get yourself a ship? I surely did. Bought a Ceres class uh, light freighter. Like mine. Nice going. We'll get you uh, set up as soon as you can take her out for a spin. What else should I do before I take off? Well, there's a lot you can do out here in Apollo. Salvage, bounty, hu bounty hunting and the like. But I reckon hauling cargo is your best bet to get started. It's the backbone for all us freelancer ship captain types here. 
Me, I work for United Leon Space Enterprises. They're a heavy manufacturing company operates in these parts. All is large scale construction materials and the like. So, I'ma do you a favor and put in a good word with my boss. And you uh, and get you set up as a freelancer for them. Jobs don't just grow on trees out here. You gotta find work uh, one employer at a time. You might have seen those monitors for buying and selling goods, and that's one with the contracts on it. Those are your main ports of call for taking contracts and the like. So what you'll want to do is over there and uh, go over there and find the contracts button and pick one up. I'll tell you what goods you're hauling and where they is going. Come back and see me when you've grabbed your first contact. Will do. Thanks. All right, so let's go grab a contract over here. So three helium. A jump is required. Now, you have to remember something. They will pay me almost 200 credits for this. But we, you have to remember that we will have to pay the docking fees on this station. The docking fees on the station we're going to. And because this one requires jumping, we'll also have to pay jumping fees. Because we don't have a jump drive yet. Uh, so this one does not require... Okay, this one's better. Because it does not require uh, jumping and it's much better money. So let's do this. 24 units of hydrogen to Crassus Harbor. Let's take it. Alright. Oh hey, you're back! You got a contract? Got a destination? I surely did. I'll be hauling some gases. Great! I suggest you jot down the details in the notes section of that PDA you're holding there. It's, it's a useful little tool for keeping track of what you're doing. Note section. Noted. Listen, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Something you may not know. You know that big plan y'all had to build a trans-cluster jump bank back to Earth? They didn't build it? Yeah, they never finished it. Delay after delay, the whole lack of resources in Apollo thing, and after a while a bunch of folks started thinking we were better off without having Earth rule over us anyway. The government we set up, the Apollo Earth Authority, well, that was only ever meant to be temporary-like, so she just kind of collapsed once enough people felt like they were doing fine just taking care of themselves. So, there's seven major states out there now. Well, I hope the audio isn't crackling, because it sure is for me. Darn it. You're inside the Leon Empire here. Um, welcome. This is unbelievable. What about Earth? Don't people care? Sure, some still do. Ain't like it were unanimous. But the folks who wanted freedom from Earth won out. Folks who didn't want uh, that connection didn't. Or who still wanted that connection. So the whole purpose of the Cassandra mission was abandoned? Well, not as such. I mean, half of it sure was. Earthgate ain't a thing and we're alone out here. But the other half? We sure as heck colonized Apollo like he was, we were supposed to. You'll see when we get out there. Ships and space stations damn near everywhere. I'm going to go look, go look for myself. I have to see what's going, uh, what's happened. Fair enough, friend. Well, let me just hit you with one last piece of advice. You got your comms room on your new ship. Go there and type mail on the right-hand monitor. It'll show you all the messages you've downloaded and send you one. Reply so as uh, I know you got it. Mail on the right-hand monitor. Okay, got it. Thanks. Well, good luck out there, newcomer. All the best with your life. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is pay the fees, which is 75 credits, which is pretty painful because we don't have a lot of money. No fees on, and we're going to request permission. Now we've got a brand new ship. It's much bigger. Let's close the airlocks. Over here to the right, we've got a uh, passenger room, and over here we've got our captain's quarters with some lovely pictures. And then over here we've got the... Uh, Let's download messages. I don't want them on autosync because it does use a little bit of uh, little bit of uh, energy. So let's go mail. Uh, congratulations, Captain, on purchasing your very own medium freighter. Okay, I'm not connected to the Apollo network. Okay, developers hotkeys. <laughs> Customer service to your new navigational universe. Okay. Oh my, we don't care about that at the moment. Oh, there we go. Hey, Captain, how's the ship treating you? Forgot to mention your comms room is for more than just mail. Try tapping news on your comms screen, you'll see what I mean. 
Anywho, just sending you this message like a promise, like, uh, so I say I can sleep soundly knowing you know how to get the latest on the world. Shoot me a reply so I know you're all good, okay? He's cool. Welcome, owner-operator, for choosing to work with United Leon Space Enterprises. Okay, let's uh, send a message. Hi, Leslie. Yep, I'm all settled in here. Uh, mail for mail and news for news. Makes sense to me. Thanks so much for helping me out here when I first got here. It's so good to have a friendly face with such horrifying news. I'll make my way. You've been a big help. Take care. Now, let's send that one. There we go. Didn't send our reply yet, anyway. That's, uh, space! So, over here, we've got our, uh, reactor. And all the modules of the ship. Over here, we've got also the modules of the ship. But, uh, we can set their priorities. I suppose if they get damaged or where uh, EM Con is on, oh, we'll get into that more later. And also, look, there's a trackball down here and a coffee mug. <laughs> and this is the main stuff. This is the navigation, the helm, pretty much, and all the other stuff. So anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this. I know it was a lot of text and a lot of talking, but now we actually start with a lot of gameplay. We'll be, you know, we're a freelancer. We'll be going around... I'm just gonna do this so it's paused, because time is actually running. Yes, and I'll, we'll continue next time. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell icon if you aren't subscribed to get um, new updates. And I'll see you next time. This game is fun, I promise. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.